Let it come. That's why we pray. That's why we fast. That's why we cry. That's why we travail in the spirit. That the weight of his glory will cover the earth. From Europe to America to Africa. This is what we desire to see in our lifetime. We are not called to do everything. But that which is a mandate upon our lives we must do faithfully. And all through our lifetime. Let it cover all the earth. Just meditate on this song for one minute. Let it cover all the earth. Shaliba Sabarin de Ketusia. Like the Azusa Street Revival. Like the Welsh Revival. We've read about many. It's time for us to be an extension of history. It's time for us to give life to prophecy. Let it not just be that in the days of Smith Wigglesworth, in the days of M.P. Semple MacPherson, it is the same God yesterday, today. They have joined the cloud of witnesses. Now it's our turn and we cannot afford to fail. We must be faithful like faithful soldiers, like warriors furnished out of fire, prepared for battle. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it come. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it come. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, there are only seven continents in this globe. There are not 19. There are not 30. There are only seven continents upon the earth. Seven continents that is made up of about 7.8 billion living people. Technology has provided us access to be able to take the gospel, the life, and the power of Jesus. Can I tell you, when Jesus returns, he's not going to ask you whether you're a millionaire. No, that's not the question you will hear. When Jesus comes, he's not going to ask you whether you are beautiful or ugly, whether you are an apostle or prophet. Those are not the questions he will ask. He will not ask you whether you're a professor or you're an undergraduate. Or... <clears throat> It is only what you have done with your life, your time, your resources, your energy, your influence, the degree to which the kingdom was established by reason of your being alive will be what will be marked that day. I'm saying this because there are many of us who flatter ourselves into believing that we are not called into the fivefold ministry and because of that we numb ourselves to the impulses of revival every time we hear and see the things that make for revival we disconnect ourselves and just wish those fanatical christians well it is an unfortunate orientation when it has to do with kingdom come it is everybody's business are we together i have taught you here that the end time revival is captured through a threefold prophetic formation. This is not my message tonight. I'm just communicating with you a burden that has remained with me. That number one, the first formation of the end time army are the prophetic intercessors. Men and women who are called by God and granted the burden of nations. Not give me tea, not give me bread, not Lord I'm praying for. No, 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 no. These are people who God can take nations as projects and give them. They can be praying for nations for years. The honor, the prophetesses, for instance. These are, these are the people, you, you will not see them on a crusade ground laying hands on anybody. But they are the ones who bring Jesus to the earth. Number two are those who are the sent ones not just those in the fivefold ministry but those who are the witnesses the ambassadors in the marketplace 
and in mainstream ministry as we call it who use their creativity their wisdom the investments of the spirit upon them to directly frontier the purposes of the kingdom and then number three the last group in this prophetic formation of the army are the financial apostles men and women who understand the role of resources it is unfortunate look up please it is unfortunate that the church has to manipulate people today to get people's attention to give it's an embarrassment to our spiritual growth in many non-christian faith practices you don't have to coerce people and manipulate the moment there is a project people already have it in their minds you've heard me my understanding about wealth is not about acquiring cars and houses if the kingdom does not have the kingdom cannot stand because of your being wealthy it is absolute nonsense as far as kingdom come is concerned are we together now yes let me tell you the truth all this jumping around that people say i shall not die finish that scripture the bible says live and declare one of the one of the applications for longevity in this end time is to be in one or all three of this prophetic end time formation that you are an intercessor praying down revival there are people from the time we announced these conferences they've already begun to pray listen don't make a mistake of believing that this is just about ministry expansion you'll be making a mistake let me tell you some of us fear god oh and let me sincerely admit to you that some of us have been forged out of a place of fire our reputation died before we started so don't confuse everybody and think that this is just a wild quest to make a name god has given us a global influence enough to mark time if that was the goal this is we have not taken a step out of the cave go to europe and see what is happening to young people right now respectfully speaking mental health illnesses demons are just cheap. there is a demography that spirits are sweeping some of your loved ones are part of that demography and if you keep quiet and fold your arms mama you don't want to be 60 and 70 and all the adults in your life are madmen because spirits were left unhindered not when we're alive mm -mm. not when we're alive so this is not just about koinonia no 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 there are people who died before this project started i have seen in my visions many times the cry of the spirit over europe there has to be a resurrection doing well in technology but dying spiritually the god right now in many many regions of the world is it and i do not downplay technology but hear me ladies and gentlemen fire needs to return fire needs to return where are women like deborah you don't even hear them again secular humanism all kinds of waste of time don't even talk about moral decadence that one is, is already is almost Abba. let it come for all the years let it come for all the years let it come for all Let it come. One of the reasons why we're incorporating a session for pastors and leaders is because you see, when you study the spiritual history of a man, it can explain why people are powerful and some are not. I have met respectfully speaking, and I don't say this to brag in any way. It is with all honor and glory to God. I have met sincere men of God as I travel across the world who love Jesus Christ with all their heart. People of solid integrity and character, but no empowerment. This is the missing link on many pulpits. There are people who have already given themselves to compromise. Our, our assignment is to lovingly draw their attention to return back to the cross in sincerity. We don't condemn. 
There are people who are determined to not change. We wish them well and we trust that the power of God will draw them to the cross. But there are sincere people who are wondering. They love God but no salvation, no healing, no nothing. Some of you are watching right now as I'm speaking. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He calls it the power of God. All this explanation without results. There are people who need empowerment. The Greek seeks for a sign. We live in a world right now where just talking about marketing a, a Jesus like you are marketing orange juice will only bring you disappointment. There has to be a move of authentic fire and grace. Men like E.M. Bounds, men like Charles G. Finney, who would step their feet upon that same soil. These were people who did not need to go to a radio station. The effulgence of the power that they carried, it was like a tornado. No matter where you were, if they were there, you would feel the heat that came from their spirit man. But you see, it's not just to complain and grumble. We must make our own contribution. This is what this is about. This is not about marketing a man of God and blindly marketing projects. And respectfully speaking, sometimes we men of God get ourselves into the trap of merchandising ourselves. And we forget that there is an assignment that is bigger than reputation. Let me use the opportunity to encourage younger ministers who are rising up. Be careful what you mentor and swallow in. God is in a serious business of seeing that the global harvest happens as we round up this age. Don't get into ministry if you plan to joke around. Ministry is not for jokers. Your heart must be with God. Not If you are looking for a reputation, go and write a book. You don't need to get into ministry. Ask and now give the nations to you. Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will sing your life. Hallelujah. You believe this? So make sure that you are part of this spiritual family. Plunge into what we are doing. Not everyone can travel to Europe or the U.S. or Canada or any other nation. But you can pray. You can pray sincerely. Lord, who is the next prophet you are raising in U.K.? Let him come for that conference. Let them contact fire. We also contacted fire because some people prayed us into some conferences. We went there quietly and sat down, but the mantle still looked for us. Are we together? Listen. Listen. Smith Wiggles was told Lester Sumro. And he said, do not die with the mantle on your head. He said, when you are old, find young men. Everybody will not be misbehaving. There will be disciplined young people who are worthy of your impartation. Find them, he says. When you find those young people, he said, transfer this grace. Don't die with it in your grave. The dishonor of many young people is the reason why fathers are dying with their anointings. It, they feel it is safer in the grave than on the head of a stubborn, arrogant person. That's the reason why we must trust God for grace to be humble. So that these fathers of faith, some of them are already seeing the formation of the cloud of witnesses coming to receive them. That they will not just live with their mantles and live a generation bankrupt of grace because of pride. This is not my message. Oh. This is announcement. Everything I'm saying is announcement. I'm announcing the UK conference. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever Lord. I love you
Praise the name of the Lord. To God be the glory and we look forward to an exceptional time in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So look forward to our official announcement. It's going to be a very quick one. We're only weeks away, I can tell you, from the conference. And we trust that God will grant us grace to herald a new dimension of the move of the Spirit across the UK, across Europe. And we trust that it will go far. That someday if Christ tarries, we'll be able to look at the archives of history and see what we're able to do for Jesus. It will be said that someone got born again because someone said yes to Jesus. And for all of you who have been telling Jesus no forever, I'm giving you a caution. No, both in terms of salvation and to be used by him. The no I'm talking about is twofold. There are people who will never repent no matter what you preach. I pray that tonight will be that night that the Holy Ghost will break that stony heart finally. Are we together? It is a foolish thing to say no to Jesus. This is an advice. It's not an insult. It is a very foolish approach in life to say no to the King of Kings. To the creator of the ends of the earth. No. The Bible says in the beginning God. Not in the beginning you. You came as a product of time. It is arrogance to believe that I've come. I've, I'm educated now. I, I, I went to school. Or I was born and bred abroad. I do not need Jesus. Scripture says only a fool will say in his heart. There is no God. Please listen to me. I'm, I'm speaking by the spirit. I believe that there is someone listening. There is someone watching. That God does not even want to wait till the end of the service. He's using this opportunity to speak to you now. You need to make it right with Jesus. You have to make it right with Jesus. This is not just about dying and going to heaven. This is about living a life of meaning. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his then only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have life eternal 17 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved it says there is no other name under heaven that is given unto men by which we must be saved joshua selman's name cannot save you we are only ushers that lead you to the cross are we together everybody in hell today is a believer the only thing is that they believe too late Someday, anyone who has rejected Jesus and continues to reject Jesus will have an opportunity to believe. Unfortunately, there is timing to salvation. The gates of salvation will not be open indefinitely and forever. A glorious morning will come when it might become too late. It is for this reason that Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. And he said, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he says he will convict you he will reprove the world of three things of sin of righteousness and of judgment he says so for someone you came to church you just came as a well-wisher let me come and see what is happening in koinonia or maybe you went to a family where they are connecting or you passed and saw a projector somewhere and people are just watching the lord allowed that so that you will hear this this may be your message tonight that he's calling you genuinely to make it right with Jesus. He says, he that denies me before men, I will deny before my father and his holy angels. A day will come, you will wake up in the morning and it will not be your office you're on your way going to again. A day will get, you wake up and it will not be koinonia you are coming to again. When this life is folded like a curtain, the only thing that matters is your stand with God. I think I should finish this evangelical message and do an altar call right now. I'm almost there. Praise the name of the Lord. Now listen very carefully. Aside from the fact that Jesus is coming soon, which is true, I want to assure you that Satan and the cohorts of this world have legitimate dominion and authority over your life except and unless 
you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness according to scripture are we together into the kingdom of light even the kingdom of his dear son what then is salvation is more than just chanting and confessing the lordship of jesus salvation starts by an acknowledgement of the fact that you are incapacitated that you do not have the power to help yourself by yourself the bible clearly tells us that if we say we do not have any sin we deceive ourselves and that the truth is not in us but that if we confess our sins that god is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness this is what the bible says the conclusion over all men is that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God this is what the Bible says and the Bible says that the wages of sin is death it says but the gift of God is eternal life even in Christ Jesus hallelujah the assignment of a believer or the assignment of one who is in need of salvation is to believe the gospel what is the gospel that the father loved you so much he gave Jesus as a mediator to be able to come and die for your sins the penalty the condition for having the life of god and being saved from eternal damnation is that you must have righteousness equal to that of jesus and by the works of the law and the works of the flesh no man is able to attain unto that status of righteousness so jesus came and through the exchange of his death burial and resurrection he's granted us access to his righteousness the bible says christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a cause for us for it is written cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree that the blessings of abraham might come upon the gentiles to the end that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith this is the bible what is your responsibility now is found in romans chapter 10 from verse 9 what saith you that the word is near your in your heart and in your mouth that if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead he says thou shalt be saved the law is in verse 10 it says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation let me give you an opportunity right now let's do the altar call before we preach you know those days when people got born again because of the fire that came from the salmon you would see people broken to their spirits but right now you make a lot of altar call and you see others interrupting others on stage from even getting born again they come on stage and all they are doing is carrying their phone. They want to snap the cloth the man of God is wearing. That's why we men of God must go back and receive genuine apostolic fire. Something is wrong with these games we keep playing. I'm saying it again. And I'm saying it respectfully speaking. When people were born again, you could trust what happened to them. The power, the impact of what happened. So you would see 180 degrees transformation immediately for many. But God is helping us. So I'm going to make an altar call. You can sit down and assume you did not hear what I said. But the Holy Ghost has been speaking to you. Some of you are in this auditorium right now. Some of you are in all the overflows down to the basement outside. And numerous people following online. As I began to speak to you, the Holy Ghost told you this is it. He's shown you through dreams. He's shown you through visions. Do not wait until it is too late. Jesus is calling you. You have met the man of God. Now it's time for you to meet the Savior and the God of that man. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know why God decided to take this dimension. We just started talking about UK. And now it is leading to someone's salvation. That is the way of the Spirit. John chapter 3 and verse 8. Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus. And he said, the wind blew it where it listed. You cannot tell where the sound, sound thereof. You cannot tell whence it cometh or where it's going. So is one that is born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to make an altar call and count one to five. 
wherever you are don't wait for anybody to be the first you came to church you may be old you may be young you may be educated uneducated rich poor with all the love in my heart and every sense of seriousness as far as your eternal destiny is concerned i want to make this call let your eyes look straight on jesus and i want you to run and come and stand here as i count one to five don't sit back when you know your ways are not right with jesus one come come to jesus run to jesus don't let anybody be at, make you feel bad come with confidence in your heart he's able to give you a new beginning come come i'm withholding nothing withholding nothing i'm withholding nothing Let's celebrate them as they come. Will you give yourself away? That's what the Holy Spirit is asking you tonight. Will you give yourself away so He can use you? listen please look at me ladies and gentlemen the days of acting drama of salvation is fading away from the church we are trusting god for genuine authentic salvations that when people come and stand before jesus christ they are standing before the Savior of their soul, sincerely. That the prayer you are going to be praying will not just be the recitation from a man. Oh, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe, I believe. Amen. <clears throat> Genuine and sincere salvation. Look at my beautiful daughter. Look at this little girl. Can you imagine coming to stand for Jesus? Whether she knows what she's doing or not, that is the safest place for her to be. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you, my brothers and sisters, for making this noble call. You see, this is your family. When you come to make this, to honor this clarion call, don't see it as though you're on your way to a funeral. No. You are about to receive the greatest gift that can be given to any man under heaven. Not a thing, a person. Jesus himself. Hallelujah. If I pray for you for healing, I prophesy upon your life, or I pray for prosperity, I only gave you things. But when you have him, and I I'm desperate for you. Just sing it one time and I'll pray for them. And I, I'm lost without you. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Everybody who is genuinely saved had this moment in their lives. My call for you is that while you make these declarations, mean it from your heart. No matter what has happened in your life or not happened, when you come to Jesus, the Son of the living God, He is able to give you a new beginning. And for someone who is following online, let this be your chance. Don't say next week. Don't say miracle service. Now is the day of salvation, the Bible says. There's no guarantee for tomorrow. But now is a gift that was given by God to remedy for yesterday. Lift your right hand if you can, all of you. All who are in the overflow, down to the basement, outside, following online. 
please lift your hand. Thank you for making this decision for Jesus. I see those of you outside and all other overflows. God bless you. Lift your hands. Say this after me and let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i declare that you are my savior you are my lord and you are my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I declare that I'm a child of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for my precious, loving brothers and sisters who have come out responding to this call. And the many others who are scattered across the globe who are following. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards you. And I administer, I decree and declare... By the power of the Holy Spirit, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. Satan, take your hands off their lives from today. You have no power and legal ground over them. In the name of Jesus, I call you the righteousness of God in Christ. And in the name of Jesus, you are also recipients of the abundance of grace. Even the gift of righteousness. And you reign in life. I declare that you go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus there are two of you here i just saw spirits appear and the lord is saying i should get them out of you you heard their confessions of faith and i command out of them now in the name of jesus christ this is the power of the gospel hallelujah so i congratulate all of you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, for those under the anointing, that's all right. When they are fine, we can pick them. Ushers, well done. God bless you. Let me request that you please look to your left, which will be my right. There will be a group of people there. And by the way, Zaria is connecting. Our Zaria family is connected. I, I want to believe that there are people who have also made that decision right now. And so counselors please manage them all of you may i request that you please move to my right which will be your left you will have a minute or two with the counselors and i promise you you'll be back to your seat those under the anointing just hold them gently let's handle them carefully let's give jesus a big hand clap for salvation <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord has this inspired someone? We thank the Lord. The price for every soul is the blood of Jesus. Every soul. Every one of these precious people is equal the blood of Jesus. And we thank the Lord. And for all of you who invited them to church, may God honor you. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3, it says that they that be wise shall 